stop chasing me! I have a cannon in my hand! It's a cannon, I tell you! A cannon! Jared Poland, Fro Knows Photo. Dot com here with another super secret project video. This time I want to talk about composition. Uh, I'll be using a Rebel T3i. I have on here a 16 to 35 2.8, but to keep it more realistic to what most people starting out will have, I'm only going to shoot it um, in the range of 18 to 35. Uh, because most kit lenses are 18 to 18 to 55s, and I'm not going to go below f 3.5 just to keep it more realistic. But when I say composition, I have here Kermit the Frog as my subject, and he's an inanimate object. So we're going to play around here. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I haven't even tried to compose an image here to see what would work best with just basically a kit lens. If Canon actually sent me the kit lens this time, I, I would have used it but they sent me a better piece of glass because I asked for it. Um, but it still has to go back. I still have to send it back soon. Um, so what, what I plan on doing here is just going through different angles, taking pictures and showing you what they look like to see how I'm changing up the composition, changing up my angles, seeing what works best. Because the best way to learn your composition is to actually go out and see it and do it. So that's why Kermit the Frog is here for um, my, uh, my subject and just a little shout out my mom made this in 1983 and it has been my doorstop ever since she used to do a lot of ceramics and this is one thing she brought home in 1983 when i was roughly two years old so yeah let's get to the composition video end of this or the composition part of this and i'll be right back to use this canon t3i hopefully the guys pick up some information from this we'll be right back all right so we're back now t3i in hand and this is about seeing and feeling the image. Sure, there's not much going on here. I just have Kermit the Frog sitting over there, and I have to find the image. If you can practice this yourself and find the image with inanimate objects and things like that, you're going to train yourself to get much better when you're in an actual shooting situation. All this practice of trying to find the right composition is going to lead you on the right path to getting that composition when you're out there shooting what really, really matters. This is a great test. I have to sit here um, and work through the different, you know, it's not the biggest range of lenses. It doesn't go 18 to 55 like those kit lenses. It's gonna go 16 to 35, but like I said, I'm only gonna shoot from 18 to 35 and at the lowest aperture of 3.5. And that's gonna have to change as I hit 35 because most cameras, when you don't have the 2.8 lenses, are gonna do that. But what I'm going to do here is try to find the image. I'm just going to move around and search for it. And we're going to pop, those, pop the images up on screen as I shoot them to see what we're getting and then see if it's good composition or bad composition. So, you know, really, sometimes people start out and they, they shoot like this. So let's see, that's at 35. Fully standing up, shooting the, the child or whoever down at a low angle and it looks like this. What could you do to make that better? First things first, if this is my subject, I'm getting down on my subject's angle because this is how you want to photograph a child or a subject on this low angle. Boom. Let's see what this looks like. There you go. Now, right now, I'm in aperture priority. We're not going to worry too much about the exposures right now because this is all about composition. So there's, oh, I thought I had a bug on me. I don't like bugs. There's the first image not very interesting. There's a second image getting even better. I like that angle. Do you see what I did? I threw them off to the right hand side. Now let's put them right in the middle. So using this cannon, I hit this, uh, this, this button over here, top right corner. It lights up the different focusing points. Then I select the middle one and hit OK. So here he is right in the middle. So now you can see the picture basically in the middle. Look at the difference between the first one he's off to the right hand side and the second one he's right in the middle which composition is stronger that's up to you but I like I like him thrown off to the side because that to me is a better image now what would a vertical look like do we want him right in the middle like this do we want to focus and do this You know, you're just getting a different feel for what's going on. 
Could we come here and shoot an even wider shot? Or do I want to come over to here and be like, all right, Kermit, let's see what we got. Let's work with you. Oh, right there, Kermie. So here we go again. I'm picking my focusing point by hitting that center button and moving all the way over to the leftmost focusing point. I think. I'm still learning how to use this bad boy. There we go. Focus right on his eye from this corner. All right, there we go. I want to get more of his body in there, so I'm going to go wider. And here we go. Now, I threw him off to the left-hand side, but I got his whole body in there, and that's looking much better than the shot before. The shot before is good, but look at the tree right in the background. It's like he's got a tree coming out of his head. Let me focus, lock in. See, now you see this tree coming out of his head. That's not good. How can we, how can we fix the tree coming out of the top of his head? Well, we could move slightly this way and be like, all right, I don't want the tree coming out of your head, so let's go vertical, and now the tree is off to the side. Focus, focus. Boom. Now we see the difference in where the tree is. Much better than the tree coming out of the top of his head. So really what this is coming down to is just seeing what's going on in the frame, what's going on in the background, what's going on in your, just in your sight lines. It's all about seeing. It's not just about where your subject is or what your subject's doing. He's not moving. I have to move myself. Many times when I'm shooting models, I don't ask them to move if they're in a bad place. I'll move myself and last resort is ask them to move because I want to, you know, I want to see the image. I'm always looking. I'm always looking through the camera going, all right, let's see what could be the right angle because you want to look through the camera because that's what your image is going to be. Not so much always just looking not through the camera. You want to use the camera to see what your frame is going to be because then you're going to see what's going on. So those are just some simple examples of what I'm thinking about when I'm looking through the camera and shooting the pictures. Was there a distraction in the background? Would he look better at a higher angle or a lower angle? Would he be better right in the middle? Could he be better to the left or the right? These are just basic composition things that are going through my mind every second when I'm shooting a picture. When I'm looking through the viewfinder, am I looking right at the subject all the time? No, I'm focusing on the subject, but I'm checking the outer border. Is there something protruding through the outer border that doesn't need to be there? Is there a distraction? I don't know, but that's what I'm looking for and what I'm thinking about. So that's about it for the a basic thing on composition right now. I hope these images help you out. I hope it gives you a, a little bit of insight into what I'm thinking about so you can try to think about that as well. So that is another super secret project video. This time, composition with Mr. Kermit the Frog. Kermit, thank you very much. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!